Hey, what's going on guys? So here, CCXRC, and we're gonna have a fun show today. We're gonna look at the new SCX24 Chevrolet C10s 1967 edition. These things look super hot. And we're gonna go ahead and show you unboxing of these, and then we're gonna get them on my new little micro crawler course that I'm working on. It's not completed. This will be the first time that you see it. I'm still working on the build video for it and still adding pieces to it. But we'll show you guys a little test of these on that toward the end of the video. So uh, stick around for that. We're gonna look at these, tell you what you get in these, the kind of uh, build quality that these are and why I keep buying so many of them because they're so much fun, you guys. These are the first micro crawlers that I've had that I've really enjoyed. And uh, so let's talk about it. We'll get these around and uh, show you guys what you get in the box. All right, you guys, we're gonna do a proper unboxing of this one and show you everything that you get and what to expect as you open it up. It's pretty easy to get in here and get get the truck out, the vehicle, and all the different pieces with it. So we'll go ahead and just give you a first look-see here at how it all comes out. So it's gonna be attached to this piece right here. Got one little tie, pop that, and the truck will be free. Comes right out of the box. Get that out of the way, got your manual, and then you've got underneath here, you've got your controller. Down in the bottom, we'll get our charger and our controller. So I've got everything out of the packaging that it came in here to show you everything that you get in here. Get the manual, which is gonna have lots of tips on how to work the thing, and it's gonna also show you parts and things like that when you get to the back here how to do assemblies of things, so that's handy if you ever need to work on it. You have your battery charger, USB, plugs in here, and that will go to the balance lead that is on the battery, which is inside the vehicle. We'll see that a little bit later. Comes with the little Allen wrench, hex key. So it looks like an extra drive shaft parts here, and then links as well, and an extra little clip for keeping the body tied down there. But it does come with the four batteries that you need for the transmitter, which is not something you see that often anymore in ready to run vehicles. This is a truly ready to run out of the box. In fact, we'll be able to power it on and drive it for a while off of the charge that is in the battery, like so. And we'll be able to pop this open, turn it on, light comes on, you've got your bind switch, um, your dual rates here, and then you've got highs and lows for your throttle. So if you want to be able to adjust how fast the truck goes, if you want that more scale look, you might want to put it in low for certain things. And when you need that wheel speed, bump it up to high. That's typically what I do just because I like the look of it running slow. Um, it is their AX4 controller, foam on it. They feel really good, 2.4 gigahertz and uh, I still run these on the other ones that I have and I like them. So uh, yeah, pretty simple as far as operation goes. And you've got your uh, steering set right here for your trim. If it's not driving straight, you can make adjustments here to straighten out the wheels. So let's take a look at the truck itself. And uh, a lot of this is gonna be for both of these. So we'll show you what comes in the box of the other one, but uh, the rest of it's gonna look pretty much the same as this cute little guy here. Uh, it does have the blacked out rims versus the chrome. In fact, I can I can actually get both of them out here and do a little bit of side by side of the exteriors on them. Here's the little differences that you see in these two side by side. I really like this axial logoing on the door of this. That's what made me really want this. Got lots of detail up in the front here. These are molded plastic pieces that go on the Lexan body. So it's like a, a chromed plastic. In fact, this one's chipped a little bit because I did run it up at our hobby town on their rocks and they're building an indoor course, which is why the tires also look dirty because they've got new fresh pond rock that still has the sand and stuff on it from Home Depot, scuffed it up a little bit, but that's what makes them look great, you know? Um, Chevrolet in the back, silver. And then you can see the holes here on the top and that's where the light bar like this one can go is right up here. If you want to install it, I kind of am growing, it's growing on me without it. 
and I've done so much falling and crashing that I probably want to keep it off of this one. Uh, but that does have the silver rims. They're the same design as far as the patterning of the mold. But these are blacked out. I do like that about this. On video, it feels like this one's going to stand out a little bit more. If that's something that you care about. It will shine, uh, especially on my darker course. This one, the bumper's all pushed in here. Has a black plastic molded front end here. Not going to chip like the silver one did, which is probably going to be nice for my driving styles. But awesome 67 Chevy look. Little axial logo here on the door. None of the actual extra signage on here. I wish they'd have included the sticker so that you could maybe put this on here. I think that would have been cool to actually have on this truck as well. Because I do like that axial parts and service. Same... Uh, Back end style, already got the uh, light bar here. We'll see what it looks like off the truck when we uh, go ahead and pull out the other one out of the box. To open these up, they're on a hinge, which I love. Super great, really small. So we're gonna have to zoom in here to see this thing. So it's got a really tiny 88 turn motor in here, Horizon Hobby, 30C, two cell batteries strapped in and uh, here is that bind plug that you use to charge it and over here is the actual power that you plug in right there to uh, get this thing running so we're going to go ahead and get this out because we're going to go ahead and turn it on as well while we're in here it does have steel uh axles in internals uh, like the drive shafts internally um, but these are plastic splined drive shafts here plastic links Plastic skid plate does have like a stamped C-channel style uh, frame to it. Battery mounted up top. So up front here, now that we've plugged in our battery, you also have your motor plugs into the ESC, but it also is your receiver. And so that's what uh, allows the car to be controlled. If you want to change out your receiver to something else, you will probably have to get another ESC and uh, change some of this all out. Uh, up front is their AS1 steering servo. It does have a little, um, it looks like a break point here, which is for your uh, servo saver. So if you hit on this really hard, it should allow that to kind of open up. Instead of t sending all that right back into the servo, it'll kind of have a little saver there. Um, just a little plastic servo horn with the, the servo saver built in. I call it a break point, but it's not really... It's to save the vehicle from braking, but um, you can see here the LED lights that go up to the front. Turn it on. Those are great, nice scale detail. Um, but yeah, so you've got LED lights and uh, you're able to power them right here from this. You could actually do another set of LED lights. And there's a little brake option here with a little pin that you pull. Uh, to be able to change how the, the brake setup is on here. I don't know what that's exactly for. I know that the worm gear already is kind of like a drag brake um, that they have in the axles. And you can see up front here the steering links. Right here are plastic. Lots of plastic through here. The shocks are just a friction shock. But my buddy uh, Steve over at Shen RC shows you how you can put a little bit of uh, grease inside of here because these have quite a bit of bounce to them and it takes away that bounce, uh, which is pretty cool. I haven't done it to any of mine yet. I just saw the tip actually yesterday, so I need to try that on one of mine. Uh, but you can see just looking around here, the transmission in the middle, set up just like the bigger scale ones, the one tenths but really shrunk down to this micro size and they've done a great job doing it. Uh, so hats off to Axial for making these a really fun little class of trucks. We'll uh, get these out to run for you after we show you what also comes inside of the green one because it does have a little bit different package in here because of the, uh, the bar. Now my controller for this is already out because I did drive it. So you're not gonna see that underneath here. Uh, but you do get the links and stuff. The manual batteries are already out because of they're in the controller. But here is your charge cable. And then here is the light bar kit that you can install onto that guy if you so please. 
right now I do not so please. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take one of these over to my course. We're going to run it. We're probably going to run this one because it'll look a lot better on the course because it's a dark gray course. So we will run this one for you guys. All right, guys. So here is a look at my scale course that I've been working on with my son right across from the studio space. This is just plaster cloth that's kind of draped over a whole bunch of things like boxes and bubble wrap and uh, this aluminum foil we use kind of in here, these kind of tins, and then some of the bigger cooking tins underneath to kind of get the shapes. So it's uh, fun. I found these 24th scale uh, cones on uh, Amazon from Hobby Gear and uh, 124 scale cones. Thought it was pretty cool. So we're gonna give this a, a little run for you guys, see how it does, and um, yeah, just have some fun. We'll start it way in the back. I don't have a whole lot of room in here right now to uh, get the tripod in there nice and close. So we're gonna have to shoot it from a distance and see how it does. Oh, I'm right on that edge. These things are awesome as far as the scale look to them, as well as just the flex that they get for such a friction shock type vehicle. You can see I'm sliding on this plaster cloth quite a bit. That's one of the details that I want to add is like sand. Ooh, got a nice twist there. And I bring it around. Getting the axles all crooked. I tried to make the course so it would have some difficult lines that you could do, but you have to use cones and then you do it for time because honestly, uh, you know, it's a limited space that I'm working with. And so we're just uh, kind of going for a little bit of fun. Let's see if we can climb this hill. Now this is a tricky hill to get up because it is slick and there's a hump right in the middle. It's doable, I've done it several times. You have to kind of get over that initial hump. There it is. We've climbed it. Now eventually I'm going to add sticks and some other things as well because coming down this is pretty impossible. The, uh, the steepness of it and the lack of room to turn does not give you the angles you need to get down. Plus just how slick this surface is. Maybe if I made it a little tackier, uh, put some glue down with some uh, sand, it might allow a little bit more bite, but it's uh, pretty tricky. Whoa, we may get it. I did make this little lip right here. Now my other vehicles have not been able to make this. So if this truck does it, it might just be the weighting of it with the bed. Oh, I'm impressed so far. Oh, we made it. That is my first time to make that. And I'm about to now come off the edge. One of the ideas that I do have is to come off the edge of this course and uh, have some maybe like bridges that suspend out over here, uh, out of this area. But this is literally just like shelving for my uh, camera equipment underneath here. She's flexing. You can also really high center on this track. I, there's a lot of steep areas that you can get all high centered if you're not careful about your lines. This is one of those coming up right here. Get twisted coming off. If you don't get the right line on this, it can be trouble. All right, we did all right. But you see the angles that it's working. We hit the cone. We'll make it, bring it back around. But you can see the control that these have with that worm gear in the axles. They seem really controlled to me compared to a lot of the other, uh, not a lot, but some of the other trucks that I've driven. And so I'm actually in high gear right now, which a lot of times I'll run low gear until I need to change. 
give a different angle and we'll do it again. So one thing that I will say shocked me a little bit about these trucks is that the uh, the tires do rub the body right out of the box. Oh, and we high centered. I mentioned that you have to come over right there we go. Yeah, the uh, you do get some rub on the body from the tires as it flexes and you'll hear it creaking and popping. So I would have thought that they'd have maybe done something to make it not hit. These tires are a little bit smaller than like the Jeep and the deadbolt tires, I believe too. Now here's a spot where I could get a little tricky. Getting that lean. I did not want this course to be super easy. And there are some difficulties with it, especially if you have the cones out. There we go. Get that tire on there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is try and climb up that crazy hill that I just came down saying I couldn't do. We're gonna see if it'll allow me to go up it. Whoa. We are sidewalling it. Oh, my battery just died. So I mentioned the tires, and you can see that the Jeep tire is a little bit bigger than uh, this one, and this one still rubs. I'm gonna switch out the trucks because I'm running on whatever battery power is in the vehicles when you get them, and I ran that other one already for probably a good 15 minutes at uh, Hobby Town, and that's not charged. That's with it coming out of the, the box. So I gotta get these tires up over this. There it goes. Fight this line going up. Oh, it's sliding off. I'm gonna try and catch it here. I don't want it to, to fall. All right, we did not make it that turn. So we're gonna try again. Try a little bit different angle, see if we can get it to not slide off. It's sliding again. I wonder, there may be a little bit of speed that I need to approach this with to get it over this without sliding or really hook it like that at an angle. Whoop, we just slid off though. We're just sliding right off of this here along that edge. So that might be somewhere I'd build that up a little bit with sticks. I want this to be doable, but we want it to be technical. So if I find that it's doable, I'll probably leave it. But I feel like it is just sliding off that. But maybe it's something that like we need wheel weights or something like that down to help out. We'll see. But uh, it seems like it's close. We're so close to finding that line that'll get us up there. I just want to give it one more shot before I throw in the towel here on video. I'm not finding a line right now that can get me up here because of the back tire sliding. They, the back tire's not making this jump here. Oh, there it is. Now if I can bring the front end back around. Drop the front end. Oh, there it is. Now I gotta get going the upward direction again. Hook it. Hook it, come on. You got it. I think if I give it a little bit of throttle, I might be able to bounce it up here. Here it goes, nothing. No, no, no. no. That is quite a bump. So I put quite so I put quite a bump here that I'm not sure the back tires are going to get up over. I'm kind of hanging on at the moment, and without the traction, I'm not sure we're going to get it. 
and if we gun it we might end up going over the top so we're just gonna have to go for it and then be quick on the brake fight it now I've really kind of rolled myself into a weird spot there definitely needs to be something added in here because if you get to that point you're already doing pretty good because that's a tough climb to get onto now this is going to be tough because it's steep coming down so you can't drag brake too much or it will flip yeah and then if you put a cone so you have to come here at this angle that'd be pretty cool anyway guys this is just one thing you can do i spent a weekend getting to this point with this course but um there's so much more that could be done to it and uh, making other pieces. These are just a third of a four by four piece of plywood. Uh, and I have the other third of it I'm working on that I can swap in and out and change things up for the course or travel with it if I want to. Maybe go up to my hobby town or something and do something up there, some kind of little competition with them. Although they're building a little cool crawler course in their shelving unit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, see that is tire rubbing on that back end right now. But it looks super cool. Okay guys, there you have it, the Axial SCX24s on my new micro course. Let me know what you think about the course. Still working on other parts of it. And uh, we're going to be adding some moss and greenery and things like that to it. That'll also change the look and the grip on it. So uh, be looking for the video on that. That will be coming out soon. But yeah, you really can't go wrong with these. For something you can play with indoors like this, uh, take it out on smaller rocks. And uh, you don't need big rocks with these. You can just go and buy $5 bags of rocks at Home Depot. But if you like the Jeeps, guys, they've got the Jeep or the Deadbolt. And they've got these two. The Jeep they've also got in white. Uh, but they also sell clear bodies for them if you want to go that route as well. But the uh, Deadbolt also comes in a red color. So um, check out your local hobby shops. And I'll have links down below. If you don't have a, a local hobby shop, you can, you can pick them up direct from Horizon and get them that way. So thanks for tuning in. As always, guys, have fun RCing, and we will catch you next time.